Hey guys, Jupiter here. Uh, I guess I'm all complete with my plannings and preparations for the Pacific Crest Trail this year. And uh, I'm glad that I had the foresight to film it from start to finish. Be packing up all of my resupply boxes and uh, preparing all my food for this year's 5,000 plus mile hike. Uh, so we'll get that started in just a second and you guys can watch me uh, <laughs> run around at 16 times speed uh, getting everything together but uh, I thought as that was going on I could talk a little bit about uh, why I like doing it this way opposed to uh, how most people do it uh, I personally send myself resupply boxes to almost every single town that I go to. As we know, when you're hiking a long distance trail, you can't feasibly carry 1,000 miles worth of food. Every 50 to 300 miles or so, you need to stop off and get more food. Whether that's uh, you leave trail and go into town and stop at a gas station or a grocery store or a convenience store, or in my case, stop at a post office or a business where I had sent a pre-packaged box to with all of my food for the next stretch. Uh, there's, I believe, a lot of reasons to do this, but in the same sense, there's probably a lot more reasons not to do it this way. So uh, in 2016, on my 4,800 mile Eastern Continental Trail through hike, I did 100% boxes. I rarely had to go into a grocery store other than just to buy like snack food for right now while basically I was piling my box into my backpack so then I could get back out onto trail. Uh, this year on the Pacific Crest Trail I'm only doing about 70% boxes um, and the rest of the time I'll be buying in grocery stores or gas stations and uh, yeah so I personally like it this way most people don't and I'm not sure I would really recommend it, but uh, I guess after you hear some of my perspectives and points, uh, you can kind of decide that for yourself. So I hope you enjoy this fast forwarded video of me running around getting everything together and uh, yeah, boxes are the way. <laughs> so what are some of the options of doing it this way? Well, as you'll immediately see, it's a giant hassle. <laughs> I spent months, and yeah, I take my time, but I spent months preparing and researching and prepping all this stuff, as you'll see in this video. Um, well, second, it's actually more expensive. <laughs> There's, a, I guess, a myth going around that sending yourself boxes is somehow cheaper because you can get bulk deals, and that's true, but you would have to get some serious deals, or you would have to get a bunch of companies to sponsor you to actually make this cheaper. Um, each box costs money when you send it, so uh, that's <laughs> that money adds up, and it adds up quickly. Also, uh, there's no returns. A every single thing you've bought, you've paid for it. You've sent it to yourself months down the line. Whether <laughs> you no longer like that uh, specific brand of dark chocolate anymore, it doesn't matter. You've bought a hundred of them, <laughs> and they're in every single box you've sent yourself from now until the end of the trail. So that stuff is yours. Um, there's less mystery in doing this. Chances are you know what's in your boxes. You're hiking to town, you've been looking forward to town for the past three, four days, whatever. You're looking forward to that town food, and here you've got your box. It has the same stuff as the last box, potentially and how you set it up. You know, you've already spent that money in. Whereas buying in town, you can, you can just buy whatever your heart wants right then and there. And uh, last, places you send your box to, it may not be open. You may have to take a day off. Uh, post offices are a pretty typical place to send a box to. And uh, they're not open on Sundays, and they have weird hours and weird lunch breaks, so you may find yourself sitting around waiting for your food when you really want to get back out on the trail. Yeah. So, with all this said, what are some pros? What are some positives to sending yourself boxes? Why do I do this to myself? Well, for me, one of the biggest things is that it's fast. When I get to town, all I have to do is pick up my box, 
dump it into my backpack, and I can immediately get back out on trail. Or I can pick up my box, go to that hotel, and I can relax. I can focus on other town chores, not having to worry about buying any food. So personally, I think it's easier. Um, when I get to town, I just pick up my box. You know, that, that's it. I don't have to concern myself with running around town looking for socks and batteries and toilet paper and just all these extra little things. It's all right there. I've, I've already set it up. You know, so it's embodying the philosophy of do it before you go so you don't have to worry about it later. Because I'm going to be tired, I'm going to be looking for a shower. You know, I, I just don't want to be doing things that I don't have to be doing. So this is just one little thing that I can do to make my life easier while out on trail, while hiking big miles. So one of the biggest reasons people do boxes is because of a specific diet. Whether they're vegan or whether they have a lot of allergies or just one really big allergy, allergic to nuts, you know, you may not find everything you want at a gas station or convenience store. It may be all garbage. You know, so sending yourself boxes, you can uh, go to that posh grocery store down the street or that Asian food market you love and just send yourself some really beautiful things that you're going to enjoy later. And the more time you spend on it, the, the better your boxes can be, the more diverse they can be. I personally just send myself almost all the same food all the time. And that's okay too, because this isn't my greatest motivation. Mine is for the speed of it, you know, but diet definitely plays its part. So, in conclusion, what, would I do boxes again? Yeah, I probably will at some point. Uh, will I do them to this extent? I think it would require another really, really big trip. Um, it's, it's such a hassle that I can't really recommend it to other people. And uh, hopefully kind of watching this video sped through, you can see how big of a hassle it actually is. You know, and that, that might persuade you otherwise. It's perfectly fine. You can do 99% of trails without sending yourself a single box. And uh, I think that is truly the way you should do it. Just because, you know, you're going to have, you're going to want different things when you're out there. You know, so you don't want to have wasted your money on food and stuff that later on you're just not going to enjoy. You know, so as a first time through hiker, I would almost certainly avoid it. Unless, like, those pros really, really, really appeal to you. But uh, if you've done through hikes before and you know exactly what you like and you kind of have the gist of it, then, yeah, go for it. You know, I, it's obviously worked for me in the past. Uh, I've enjoyed it so much that <laughs> I'm doing it again this year for this hike. So, you know, that's kind of it. I'm, I'm happy to finally finish this entire process. As you can see in the beginning of the video, I'm clean shaven. And then by the end of this video, I kind of have like a little bit of a beard going, which I thought was funny. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've got more coming up soon, May 10th. I hit the Pacific Crest Trail for uh, my 5,300 mile journey this year. And I hope you stick around to watch some of that. And uh, it's been fun preparing. I'm basically done at this point. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys, and I hope you have a nice day.